Space nerds of the world rejoice, you might soon be able to get your very own AGC. The RR Auction House, who specializes amongst other things in space hardware, will auction this AGC very soon. And no, this is not Jimmy's AGC, or as we call it, our AGC, which we just restored. This one comes instead from the Apollo collection of Don Isles, the programmer of the P63 LEM landing software that we were recently flying on our restored AGC, and whom we met a few months ago at MIT. Don, by the way, has already donated uh, many of his items, including uh, this key, uh, to the MIT Museum. But this beautiful AGC, my friend, could be all yours, because it is for sale. And there's also a disky being auctioned to go with it, although we are told this one is not from Don Isles. The auction site has many pictures of the AGC, including some of the inside, uh, like this one. Uh, and this one. Uh, but wait, let's blow it up. What's up with that blue blanket in the background? I recognize this. Could it be? <laughs> it's not light. Ready? Coming in. Where are we going? Uh, you're going downstairs. Oh, is it heavy? What's well, about seventy pounds? Eighty yeah, pounds? Yeah, ninety yeah, pounds? Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder what's in it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Mark. Mark, it's beautiful to meet you. Thank you for having Hi, us. Mark. I'm John. Thanks, John and Bobby. Bobby. Oh, Ken. Yeah. Ken. So you're both from our auction. Yeah, yeah. All right. And and the word has it that you have an AGC. That is the word. That's the word. Everybody has one these days. I don't know. <laughs> Except, <laughs> Except us. you. You're making your own, right? So let's, see, right? let's see what this one looks like. As it turns out, I am also a customer of RR Auction. That's where I got my Apollo Iric Gyro, and this beautiful analog computer for a future video. They ask if we could help identify, inspect, and possibly open up the AGC. Of course, we were dying to learn more about it, so we enthusiastically accepted. And sure enough, as soon as the AGC was out of its case, it took Mike all of 30 seconds to identify it. So, say, say that again, this was the original LTA-8 one? Yeah, this is... How, how, how can you tell? Yeah, it's serial number 8, it has its part tag on the back. Serial okay. number 8 is the original guidance system 602 AGC. Mm -hmm. And why did you swap it? I have no idea. Um, all of the configuration drawings we have uh, mm -hmm. indicate that uh, serial number 8 was the guidance system 602 AGC. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had other context clues from later documents that mm -hmm. they were talking about AGC 602 and serial number 8 as sort of separate things. Mm -hmm. uh, so the existence of this here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also being a dash 051 and not dash 071 confirms for certain so, that it wasn't an LTA-8 for the chamber test, right. but uh, oh, oh. it is the one that was originally part of guidance system right. 602. Elementary, my dear Watson. So there is a chance that this one is not potted, actually. No, it's very likely not potted yet. Right. Yeah. So did you get the whole LTA-8 background? Um, they did vacuum testing of a whole um, lunar module with astronauts in a, in a giant vacuum chamber in Houston which was the Lunar Test Article 8, LTA-8. It was like astronauts in the module in the vacuum for like a week or two. Little refresher on LTA-8 and Guidance 602. LTA-8 is short for Lunar Test Article 8, and it is actually a fully functional LEM, the first one, almost identical to the one that would be first flown on Apollo 9. You can still see LTA-8 at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. But this one did not fly in space. Instead, it was used on the ground for uh, the all-important man rating and space qualification. The LEM was dropped in the giant vacuum chamber B in Houston, and fully dressed astronauts flew parts of a mission, putting the LEM through its spaces, complete with mission badges and uh, full mission control. Several test flights were done, up to 12 hours in duration. The test was uh, successful and the LEM was man-rated and subsequently a similar one was flown on Apollo 9. By the way, uh, the same was done with the command module in Chamber A for the two TV-1 missions, 
where the astronaut uh, in the CM flew for eight days straight, simulating a full mission, including even an EVA in the chamber. Right. So th this computer and then Jimmy's computer were in LTA-8. Right. And so our, our, ours is, Jimmy's AGC is the one that went through the vacuum chamber testing. This AGC was originally stalled in that lunar module and was removed at some point. We're not exactly sure why. For, uh, for some reason. But how do we know, you might ask? Turns out the AGCs were tracked as a component of the larger guidance and navigation system assembly. LTA-8 was fitted with guidance system number 602. We also have this document that shows that system 602 was originally fitted with AGC number 8, which happens to be the very AGC that our auction just brought to my lab. But the AGC number 8 was swapped at one point, and this later document shows that the AGC that eventually flew the LTA-8 man rating mission was serial number 2300-071, which happens to be the one that we lovingly restored over the last year. But it gets even more interesting. This document shows that both of these computers were part of a group of three computers. They are tracked here under GNC202, GNC602, and Array8. These were upgraded to Dash 031, Dash 041, and Dash 051, respectively. Then the further addition of a grounding test plug cap, which you can see here on the right on our AGC, made them Dash 061 and Dash 071, and we now just found out that Ray 8 stayed as its original Dash 051, as it says on the tag, and it indeed does not have the grounding plug. And guess what? We also found that third AGC, the Dash 061. We identified it during our visit at the MIT Museum two months ago. It did not have any tags, but from the B8 module and tray B serial numbers, we could tell it was one of the three in the group. Since we found the two other ones, the MIT one is for sure the Dash 061 that was the AGC used in the 2TV1 for the man rating of the command module. Computer assembly that we know, 203 100, so that's the same. Yep, Dash 051. Uh, and so it's Ray, Ray, Ray 8. 8. Yep. So that's number 8 in the series of 15. Right? Yep. So, so this. Uh, so we found we found all the siblings of our AGC basically. Yeah, these are probably the three that would be this model AGC and also and have this uh, the silver paint on them. <laughs> it's probably these three. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so if you are not dizzy yet with the AGC numbers, of the fifty-seven block two AGCs made, fifteen were prototyped from the series two thousand three one hundred. Seven were qualification units from the series 2003-200 and 35 were flight units from the final series 2003-993. And so we think we identified the three siblings involved in the test chamber missions. Ray, which is short for Raytheon, number 8, which will be offered at the auction, Ray 9, which is at the MIT Museum, and Ray 14 from Jimmy, which, is, which we restored and uh, is the only one in the world that works as of now. Yeah, this, this particular AGC uh, comes from an, one of the uh, Draper guys uh, that was able to, to salvage it from, from disposal. We, we, so met, we met them all uh, a couple of weeks ago. And all of them came, oh yeah, I have rope modules, <laughs> oh I have a disc key, I have yeah, this, right? I have, because they were throwing them away. They don't the GSA rules said they, they have just to they, of this they, stuff. they were going to have the same fate as the AGC that Jimmy rescued. They were going to be melted for for uh, for their metal content. Mm -hmm. I just said. So okay. Can we, uh, can we flip it over and see if it has the channels cut for the thermocouples? Yes. Yes. <laughs> flip it over. So, so do, you, do you have an estimate sure. for what do you think this will go for? We uh, Johnny, what are we what are we publishing as an estimate? Oh, uh, I believe it's fairly conservative. 200. Yeah. So, about well, that, that was before we restored the Irish. It does not. <laughs> it has the, uh, oh, it has the aluminum plate. Yeah, yeah. aluminum, not the So, so the, 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 the milling here looks different from. Yeah, we, we have the, the flight magnesium okay. tray A cover. This is what the this model AGC would originally have. Okay. Uh, so, this is 
sort of evidence that it wasn't mounted to the cold plant in the lunar module uh, for the tests. Okay, and then can we see your other goodies? So on top of the uh, AGC, we have some Corop modules. So the, the ones on the left, so you see the three on the left are Sundance Apollo 9? Sundance 292, so original release for Apollo 9. So it's not the flown version? Not flown version, right. this one is the flown version. Okay. That's and, Sundance 306. And with all those, we would complete our set, except with mismatch revisions. Right. Okay. Which you would, but that still would be something incredible. Uh, and considering what we have been doing recently, um, it might be possible for us to, 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 to patch it, yeah, right. patch it to like you know take it right. to the, the different revisions. Right, well, it might be possible for you to do that. Yep. Right. <laughs> and then Ordinary these movement. ones are from a command module. Uh, yeah, Apollo 8. Uh, so these two were manufactured as Colossus 236. But these two modules are equivalent to Colossus 237, which is what was flown on Apollo 8. Uh, the only difference between 236 and 237 was in module B5. So, which so Apollo 8 was Earth... No, Apollo 8 went to the moon. Yep. Yes. <laughs> went to the moon. And uh, Apollo 9 was a LEM mm. test in Earth orbit. Right. Okay. Get it right. Whoa. That's that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right, and one more module over here, and that one that, that I wasn't with you at Eldon's, but I saw Eldon had some of these, and I didn't know what they were, but Mike does. <laughs> they are, of course, he, he knows everything. So what is it, Mike? This is what they call a tall logic module. It is tall, <laughs> and. Uh, the idea behind this was you could plug it into half of an AGC, just tray mm -hmm. A, um, and the integrated circuits would be sticking up above all the other so modules. So it's just an extender card? Essentially, yeah. Right. So it basically allowed them during development to have one module stick out and probe them and do measurement in situ. Yep. Right, scope them. Which would be rare since it didn't work, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> had to move beyond it. Yeah, so the other one could be rarer because of it. Well, these are all pretty rare. Yeah. They didn't make a whole lot of the tall modules. So. Yeah, this is rare. Div differently from the Draper guys, the development guys, right? That's the place where you'd find them. Somebody opened it up yep, already. I, I believe that they just didn't apply enough force, as you said. Okay. Oh, yeah, they tried to open it when it didn't come up easily. Someone oh, know, uh, not knowing about uh, that force. Actually, should we, should we do it the correct way and use a pressure screw to do it? This is the the correct method from doing it. We just didn't know. <laughs> so so the official way, it's like these bolts are slowly pushing it apart so you go around and... I see. Yeah, you can wait. Yeah. Well, it's coming, but... Not. You might need to push this one in more. Yeah, but it's, it's wedged this way, so I don't like it because it's not... I would like... The, it's, it's still tight over here for some reason. Yes, there is a bolt. Aha. There Aha. are two bolts here. Three. Okay. So we might need to flip it. Oh, wait. Okay. We're coming yeah. apart here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got it. It's okay. Well, we might have a problem with these guys. Well, that would have been part of your problem, it's those. Okay, well, okay, so can you flip it the other way again? It might, it might just come apart. Yeah, I think it's, it's as likely to just be apart at this point. Yeah, it's, it's going to be apart already. So we must be able to pull it up. Yes, wow. okay, there we go. Okay. okay. All right, that was good. the same as MIT. Yeah, do not lift my cover. All right, unpot it. Turn it on. <laughs> Power it up. Okay. Uh, we have ray four, ray eight, ray four, seven, nine, eight, twenty-nine. My goodness, thirty-one. Serial <laughs> number four, and this is model eight. 
Yeah, no, the, there's there is no correlation between AGC number okay. and, and it's just when they, had, they took the modules they had on the on the shelf. Yeah. We we just no, had no luck that our two our two modules these two were the potted ones, right? I, I think two broken ones. That could be potted. I think it probably is. I bet you if it says do not lift by the cover, it's partially potted. It's not fully potted. You you will get a module like the one you have in uh, CHM. CHM. Thirteen, thirteen. So notice how those two are mounted reverse, and that's uh, as far as Mike can tell. This is a, a block one uh, left over. Is it potted? Is it not? Potted? It is. It is not potted. You can see it. Yeah. Uh, just quick to make me feel really bad. <laughs> Jimmy got the wrong AGC. He did, yes. There it is. That would have been so much more convenient. That's V11, the module I labored on to make yeah. little yeah, holes. Can, can, can you flip it the, the other side? It look much. It looks much more beautiful like this. <laughs> I have to say, it is gorgeous. And we finally got a disky. Uh, I'm afraid to say, Carl, these ones work better than yours. Do they? Well, <laughs> you get what, what you pay for. What a surprise! So the dash number was replaced with 000, and the serial number was replaced with XX. Yeah, because it, it has been overwritten, but very, very cleanly. It's not an amateur job, right? It's been done for a purpose. But also, 994 disk keys never had this arrangement of alarm lights. It's at three, yeah. From here back, the 705 does match a 994 disk key. Okay. So you think the front and the back may not go together? Something like that. <laughs> The disc key was later opened at RR Auctions booth at the Vintage Computer Festival exhibition. It is a thermal tester, so we were not quite sure what to expect. It appears that the front display elements and the switches are all functional parts or, or were functional at one point, uh, probably from a former working disc key. Uh, the electronics, as you'll see, uh, had been replaced by heat generating bricks. I'd like to watch the footage until the end of this video. Thanks for watching and happy bidding! So, so are, are these original, the, the nylon screws? Nope. Well, yes, but. Okay, yeah, so that's, what it, that's more or less what we expect. Underside is. Oh, real. connectors, good. So then, so they are real. I don't see this that. is a thermal, like, um, uh, replacement that just produces heat to do thermal testing. Yeah, that's up. There we go. Okay, so there's no wiring on the buttons either. Well, so oh, the wiring has been cut. Yeah. This is, a this is complete in here. Yeah. That's been potted.